Hello everyone in Thermoland. Let's talk about today's exciting problem, which is pretty substantial. And that is, what about all the rest of the stuff? So this is the start of what I call Unit 2. Uh, so let's recap where we are. We have become absolute masters of doing energy balances, right? We can do energy balances on single unit operations. We can do energy balances on known systems like engines. We can do energy balances on unknown systems that just have things coming in and out of them. So we're really good at that. We are also good at the entropy balance and we can do that entropy balance on the same sorts of things. So, so far, so good. But when we're considering these energy and entropy balances, we have kind of a set of working fluids, that is the stuff that's in there that we're doing the energy or entropy balance on. Um, we can use a working fluid that is an ideal gas. We're good at that. We know the equations for that. We could do water. Uh, water, because it's steam, it's in the steam tables. We look things up, we use them. And even though we might not love it, we can work with refrigerants, which often you can get the information, say, from a psychometric chart. Um, psychometric? No, wrong word. Oh my gosh. From a pH diagram. Anyway, I apologize, but I'm not going to edit that out. We're going to just roll, okay? We're rolling. So the question you may be answering yourself is, what about every freaking other thing on the planet? That is not water, a refrigerant, or an ideal gas. And we want to be able to do um, the three things with all of this stuff that makes up the world. Um, and the three things we want to do are still... We want to be able to do, say, energy and entropy balances, but I'll get to that in a second. So number one thing we want to be able to do with all of the world's materials is we want to be able to describe their physical properties. Um, sometimes we're going to measure them. Sometimes we are uh, going to have to be able to calculate them. So we need to be able to do that. And we can get density, for example, for water or for an ideal gas from the equations, right? Then to do energy and entropy balances, we need what I call hugs. Uh, hugs. All right, hugs. Uh, enthalpy, internal energy, entropy, and it's coming up, it'll be here eventually, gives free energy. So we need those things to do energy and entropy balances and some other calculations that are going to be important to us. And uh, I have no idea how to do that if it's not ideal gas, water, or refrigerant. Finally, uh, part of why all the rest of the stuff of the world isn't an ideal gas is it might condense or it might even freeze. And we should know when that's going to happen. So we need to be able to find the conditions under which, so that is temperature and pressure, for example, uh, at which water or whatever substance we're modeling goes from being a liquid to being a gas. Okay, so these are the three big things we have to be able to answer for any random substance if we are going to incorporate energy and entropy balances for those substances into our repertoire of stuff to do. And this is at the core of Unit 2. We need a little bit more background before we can get to today's problems of the day. Uh, we need to think about how we can find out what we want, those three big things that we want that I mentioned on the last slide. Um, how do we find, for example, the boiling point of something, or the enthalpy of something, or the density of something? Uh, how do we get that? Well, if we can uh, find data that speaks to it directly, not so much for enthalpy, but definitely for, say, density and boiling point, we want those data from an experiment. We want information from the real world, and I put little sunshine around it to make it clear this is our gold standard, this is the thing we want. Um, we can't always get it because experiments are difficult to do and time consuming. We won't always have every piece of information um, from an experiment that we need at every data point. So then we move on to, you guessed it, equations of state. So equations of state are just mathematical representations of how a particular substance might behave, okay? That's, that's all there is to it. And they range from being wholly empirical, that means they're just a curve fit to some data. Um, an Antoine equation is somewhat like that. Uh, and then they range uh, at the other end to purely theoretical, like some folks went and sat and thought, this is how I think molecules behave, and they wrote an equation to describe that, and then we see if it matches with the real world. We'll look at a few different permutations of this. So the ideal, uh, ideal gas law is the equation of state with which you are most familiar. Go figure that. So is that an empirical equation of state or is that a theoretical equation of state? So you can hit pause and ponder that for a moment. Um, 
here's the evidence that it's empirical. You probably learned it as empirical in high school. You learn like say the Gay-Lussac Gay law and you learn Charles law and those other laws that's like pressure and volume and temperature and volume and pressure and temperature, all those things together. And those all got put together and turned into the ideal gas law. And all of that was based on experiment. So it's empirical. On the other hand, I'm here to tell you, it's actually also theoretical. Okay, and you can get the ideal gas law by triple integrating, believe it or not, over the behavior in space of a collection of molecules, as long as those molecules are treated in your math as point particles that, well, are spheres, but the spheres doesn't matter because they're point particles. They are non-interacting with each other, and they, uh, whenever they bump into a wall, they bounce off elastically. Uh, and if you take that set of rules and integrate over it, all the way to uh, full size, you get the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law is both empirical and theoretical. Unfortunately, that's not true for just about any other um, equation of state. So we're going to have to get creative and funky to describe the rest of stuff that isn't ideal gases. Okay, finally, we're ready to talk about today's two problems of the day. So get ready for two problems. Problem one is a think about it sort of problem. So think about what we just said about the ideal gas law. Of those assumptions that I gave you that are built into the theoretical basis of the ideal gas law, which one, which one, so there's one that is probably the worst assumption for most stuff. So reflect for a minute and then write down what you think that bad assumption is and we'll talk about it in class. Uh, our other problem is more mathematical and it gives you an example of when you might want to solve, for example, an energy balance on a system that is not described by ideal gas, nor is it described uh, by the steam tables. So let's imagine you are building a gas station, uh, right? So we're, we are going to dispense a liquid fuel that is stored in a tank under the ground, and there's a pump, and then people uh, put it into their cars. I hope someday soon this is a completely irrelevant example because we're not powering cars in this way, but at the moment, uh, we're going to model this as pure octane uh, to make it possible to find the physical parameters, even though gasoline is not, in fact, pure octane. But we're going to pretend for a moment. And we're going to sit down uh, under the ground. It's at atmospheric pressure. Uh, and then we are uh, pumping it, and we want to raise it to a pressure of 0.3 megapascals, so basically three times atmospheric pressure, to get it to uh, move. And uh, we can also assume down at the tank Maybe let's call it room temperature just for simplicity. We'll say it's at 25 degrees C. So how much work, what's WS, uh, what is the minimum amount of work, right? So let's start by assuming it's reversible, that we need to put in to make this pump do its thing to go. And uh, you can't solve this based on what you know right now because it's not an ideal gas, it's not steam, it's not a refrigerant. Uh, so we are going to need an equation of state to tell us the relevant terms here. So first, number one, write an energy balance. Number two, write an entropy balance. Get all that set up. No numbers, just the symbols. And then I want you to go download the software that goes with our book, the Excel version. Unless you are into MATLAB, you could go for the MATLAB version, but uh, we mostly use the Excel version. So go download that um, and the equation, uh, the software you're looking for from that specifically is the spreadsheet named PREOS, which stands for Ping Robinson Equation of State. And we are going to just dive right in and use this spreadsheet to solve this equation of state for us and uh, work through it to answer this problem. Okay, so we're going to use this equation of state basically as a calculator to find enthalpy at our first state, enthalpy at our second state, entropy, etc. Um, just like we need to do to do our energy and entropy balances. So get all that set up and we'll work through it in class.